Hello, and thank you for joining me for this special bonus episode of a Sarah Kareen Knits. It's not really a podcast this time around, so I'm not really going to call it a sip and knit episode. It's just a bonus episode for the Sarah Kareen Knits YouTube channel. Um, what I would like to do is talk to you guys about how I am planning my knitting for 2022. I talked a lot about that in my first episode back um, from hiatus. I believe it was first, it might have been second, but I talked a lot about how planning knitting kind of centers me a little bit, makes me feel a little less um, chaotic and unsure with my projects. And so I'd like to share with you guys how I've sort of developed a system um, for myself for planning my knitting. Um, I think that at the end of the video, if it hasn't gone too long, I'm also going to talk about the stash I intend to use for my Make 9 projects. Um, if you're a knitter you're or a sewer or a maker of any kind, you're likely familiar with the Make 9. Um, what the Make 9 is, is this um, sort of year long endeavor to make nine projects that, you know, you might've had your eye on for a while or, you know, something that maybe one of the projects has a technique that you're not familiar with or you haven't tried before. So the goal is to sort of, um, set intentions for the year and sort of watch how that plays out. And it's fun to look back and see what you accomplished. Last year in 2021, I finished five of my make nines. Um, two, one I decided, was it one or two? One was a sock pattern that I didn't realize was one stitch count and wouldn't fit me. <laughs> and then um, a couple other ones got moved to this year. And then one have, has just been removed from my queue entirely. So I find that the make nine is also kind of good to see what you're excited about making and what you thought you might like and then end up deciding you don't want to make in the long run which i think is really helpful for like wardrobe planning and um uh, yarn buying intentionally and those types of things so yeah so without further ado we're gonna get into it i'm gonna move us to a top down setup here in a moment if i can figure out how to do it i might end up back here but my hope is that i get a top down and i'm gonna talk you through my knitting notebooks and then we're going to talk about um, my make nines and I'm going to show you the yarn that I intend to use. My hope is that I'm going to be able to like stick a photo in and then show you guys the yarn in person so that you guys have like a visual of how um, I plan on knitting those those garments. All nine of my projects are going to be tops, sweaters, or t-shirts or what have you. So yeah, um, if you're wondering what I'm wearing, this is the Adrift shawl. I talked about this in my last podcast episode as a finished object. So if you want to hear all the details about it, I talk about it for probably 10 minutes. <laughs> so all the details are over on that episode if you want to go watch it. And without further ado, let's get into my knitting planning. All right, we did it. This is gonna be really hard for me not to hit the tripod, so I'm going to try very hard not to do that. So these are the two notebooks that I um, am going to be using for the, the rest of the year. And um, one of them is, I talked about this in my podcast, so if you watched it, I apologize if this is a repeat, but this is going to be my planner for 2022. So work, exercise, to-do lists, knitting planning, all is going to go in here. And then with this book, this is, oops, I'm so sorry. This is actually going to be my knitting specific planner. So we're going to talk about this one first, and then I will talk about this. Um, this is going to be a little bit of like a like scrapbook style um, with like I'm, I've taped in um, yarn labels and things like that. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, we'll leave that in frame. That's fine. So this is my, um, I'm saying I'm a lot. This is my Shop Amanda Rage Lee 2022 Doodle Planner. And the Doodle Planner is essentially a like pre, uh, what's the word? Pre-drawn and pre-prepared bullet journal basically so I'll open it up for you so you guys can see and I have some like reflections and goals I have a things to check out page and then I have some blank pages that I think I might fill out my make nine in here I haven't really decided um this is my like remind myself to check out things um and then it starts every month 
is associated with these little like decals on the front. So like August is my favorite month because it's like very cottage core-y. It's super cute with like the little frog and um, the mood tracker is like little mushrooms. So it's very cute. Um, if you are in the market for a planner and you like the idea of bullet journaling, but you don't want to have to learn to draw yourself, this one is truly like so fun. Um, like there, there's like a diner theme. So yeah, so this is my like every day is going in here, sort of a planner. Um, so today is Friday the 14th, so I can actually mark off the day. And so this is obvious. This is a month. I'm going to put any finished objects and the date in my notes just so that I can keep track. I finished the shawl that I'm wearing on the 8th, so that's there. And then this is just like where I'm putting in my work schedule. Nothing special. This page is the mood tracker and the habit tracker. My habits right now are like exercise, knitting, skincare related, um, nothing really special. And then this is a mood tracker that I keep forgetting to fill out, but that's what that is. Um, my knitting one is nice because it is like telling me, you know, if I feel like I've had a rough month, like mentally and like mental health wise, and I look at my knitting and I see that I haven't been knitting, like we know something's wrong. So it's just like kind of good to keep track of that. And then the next page, they, she always gives you between your like monthly spread and your mood tracker and stuff. She gives you two blank pages, which I love. So what I've decided to use these blank pages for is podcast planning and then my January knitting like kind of notes. So like I talked about the whips that I came into the year with. I'll use that as like the um, the whips that I go into the month with. So like for February, this will be January whips. And then what I cast on, if they're planned or unplanned cast ons. And then what I finish in the month, just so that I have like a month at a glance. Um, I decided to do that. This is my podcast notes. So like what I'm wearing, my FOs, just so that I keep track of like what is happening. <laughs> Otherwise I will forget. And then my make nine I wrote down because I was going to talk about this all in my podcast, but then, um, with a Instagram chit chat, it was decided or not Instagram chit chat, but like a poll, it was decided that basically I need to do a whole second video because it would just be too long. So there's a sneak peek of all my make nines right there. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, so yeah, so then we move into the weeklies. Um, this is pretty straightforward. So this is last week. Um, ignore the colorful dots. Those are just to rem to tell me how hard the workout felt um, for exercising on my Peloton, but that's besides the point. So yeah, so this shows the time I was working at. Um, and basically I'm writing in what I knit on for the day. This is for me to keep track of like, okay, I haven't knit on this pair of socks in a while. No wonder it's still in the needles. Like time to pick that up. Just like visual cues. I'm a very visual person. This is this week. So I had a couple of days off that I was able to get like chores done and stuff and like film this. Today's Friday. Um, I have a little question mark cause I wasn't sure if I was going to film it, but yeah. So basically what I'm doing here with planning my knitting is I'm not saying like I have to knit on my weekender sweater on, you know, the Friday or whatever. Like I had a goal of finish the finishing the body of my weekender, which I didn't accomplish. It's fine. It's just sort of like nice to know that that was the goal and that I didn't hit it so that I can like try to do it next week. This is all to say to you that like I thrive on planning. I thrive on visual cues. Um, this is something that really works for me. If it's something that doesn't work for you, I really hope that this isn't coming across that like you have to write down every time you knit on a specific project, yada, yada. No, like it's fine if you don't, obviously. It's just sort of like a really good way for me to keep track of like, I what really wanted to finish my drift shawl for this week. And I did do that. I finished it on the Saturday. And like, I used my morning knitting time working on my drift. And like, I can see that by knitting on it four out of five days that week, that resulted in me completing the project, right? So that was really helpful and like motivating to see. And yeah, so in the future, what I'm going to do like for next week, I'll, I'll fill out my notes is kind of more so a to-do list than like a notes. And then I'll structure it the same way. I'll write in when I'm working, if I do a workout and also my knitting that I accomplished for that day, 
to keep track of kind of what I'm working on. And then once I hit February, what will happen is I will do the same thing. I'll put my habits and my mood in there and then I will do the same thing here. I'll migrate this. Do, 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 do. Sorry, everyone. I will migrate this spread to here. So I will roll over what I had from January to February for whips and then I will do a podcast note here. Uh, my goal is to do two podcasts a month so every two weeks um so i might run out of space in february and i can just i have another notebook it's fine if it's not all in one but it is nice to just like even just have a space to think out loud on paper is really useful so that is this planner and then what's next is my knitting journal so this is a um, this is the bullet journal everyone uses, a Leuchtturm 1917. Uh, it's in this like blush pink colorway. My partner bought herself her bullet journal and bought me this at the same time. So I didn't participate in the purchasing of this. It was kind of, it was just a gift. It was a nice little surprise. She added the like pen holder here too, which is really nice. And I messed up putting it in. So, you know, ignore that. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be my knitting journal. And I'm actually really pleased with how I came up with like organizing my knitting. And I really hope it's helpful for you guys. So um, part of the thing that I struggle with is um, updating Ravelry. I don't like doing it. <laughs> So I was like, I need like a physical book to keep all my knitting information in. So for this, they have a contents page, which was great. I've started to use that as a table of contents um, to sort of like find sweaters at a glance. I decided that I was going to do uh, project planning, project tracking, a sock dump, which I think is going to be really handy. And then nitty gritty, which is what I'm affectionately calling my like more granular like project um stuff so of year of knitting 2022 and this is project plans what i just said but just kind of prettier than here i am not going to sit here and say that i am a bullet journal or with like beautiful calligraphy and yada yada um i have this washi tape with uh, sheep on it and some colored markers like it's really not um anything super special I'm gonna be honest um but it is sufficient for me so this is what we're doing here just a cute little cover page and then we get into my project plans so this is how I decided to set up and I'm actually gonna bump you guys down here this is how I decided to set up my um my make nine Ooh. Oh, so much better. Wow. Um, this is how I decided to set up my Make 9. And basically, I split up my Make 9 into the months that I wanted to try to finish them in. And then I filled in the blanks with other projects from my queue. Um, so ultimately, my goal is to make 12 garments from Stash for the year of 2022. So in January, my goal is the weekender. February is Nordic nights. I talked about those in my podcast recently. March is the oat sweater. April is the iris raglan. May is the bright side. June is the love note. July is the ripple crop top. August is a rocket tee. September is the sagala tee. Then the Cinnabar sweater for October, the SS and A for November, and the very V-neck raglan in December. Um, whether or not I actually start, finish, or accomplish this, ultimately it's fine whether I do or don't. This is just sort of how I've decided to plan it out. Um, you'll see that I've decided that brown is the planned and then this like tan color is the actual finished object. So I actually finished the Xmas, my Christmas socks and my Adrift shawl in January. I will continue to fill it out as I finish things in January. Um, so the, the brown is basically just my like big goal. And then Oops, sorry. And then the tan is what I actually finished. So that's this page. Again, I'm not an artist. My handwriting is not that fancy. And also my, um, you know, my, my drawing and grid spacing might not be great. But again, I have some colored markers and I use them. Woo. <laughs> Very exciting stuff. Um, so this is then my project 
tracker. So what I've done on the side is literally just a list of finished objects just because I think that it's fun to like number them and see them. That's literally it. I wanted something on this page. I didn't have enough to make this a two page spread. So I'm just sort of repeating it, but almost just in a way of just like, here is a whole list instead of seeing it like broken up like this, you're gonna see it like chronologically. If I run out of space, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. This is my tracker. So I didn't even really put a title at the top because I know what this means. All I wanna do is put a dot that matches the color next to the thing that I finished. So every time I finish a sweater, it's gonna be a dark green dot, socks, light green dot, shawl, teal dot, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I put hats and mittens on there because I made a lot of them this year for um, Christmas gifts. So I figured I'd include them. And then that way at a glance, I just get to see like what I finished more of this year. This is the page that I'm probably the most excited about. This is my sock dump page. I don't track socks on Ravelry. I've started to for the sake of the podcast so that people have a place to go with like notes and yarn and stuff um, if they miss what I say on an episode. But this is going to be where I put my socks because I don't want to make a specific page for every single pair of socks that I do. Right now I only have one like this and I'll talk about why in a second. But this is going to be um, basically every sock that I cast on, I'm going to write down the yarn that I'm using, the needle size, and the method. So my Yuletide Cheer socks were a US1 cuff down with a fish lips kiss heel. These ones are going to be toe up on a US2 with a flegal, etc. So just so that it, at a glance, I can remember what I did. Like if I'm wearing those socks and I really like the fit, I can reference my sock dump and just go, oh yeah, this is what I did. It's not going to have the specifics of like the number of rounds for the cuff or what have you, but it is pretty useful. So I'll just hold this up a little bit closer so you can see what I mean by that. And that's that there. So now we're getting into the nitty gritty. So this is my, the nitty gritty template. I did it in super light gray uh, marker. So you're not gonna be able to see it, but you can see it on this. So this is just to remind myself what to put on the page. That's literally it. It's literally only for my brain. Um, so what I've decided to do for this is that it's The Weekender by Andrew Mowry or Dre Renee Nitz. And um, the date that I cast on, and it's also, I'm gonna put the date that I bind off. I'm gonna put the number of skeins that I use. And I wrote down the yarn, the wool of the Andes worsted and garnet heather. I've also taped the label. I just like this for like, it's just, it adds texture and like something fun. I would eventually like to get a um, Instax, like Fujifilm, the little baby Polaroids to take like an FO picture and stick it in. But for now this will do. I also wanna get some thinner, more neutral washi tape because this is aggressive, but whatever, it is what I have right now. Um, I'm also writing down the needles that I used. Um, so for this, I'm using a US eight for the body, a seven for the ribbing and a six for the tubular cast on. This is just in case I ever wanna make another one for whatever reason, I have that information. Um, this is the gauge that I got. Not necessarily the gauge for the pattern. I believe in this case, the gauge that I got is the gauge in the pattern, but if it's ever different, I will put the pattern gauge next to it. And then the size that I'm knitting, for obvious reasons, I wanna be able to reference that in case someone needs to know <laughs> or I wanna remember. And then notes. So I'm gonna knit, knit, knit the back body to 16 inches, um, which is more than the pattern calls for because I'm tall. And then I'm re reminding myself that like I'm gonna put a removable marker because it says to knit to a certain length, but if it wants me to match the front and the back, the length that I knit, I just wanna be able to reference the rows that I knit. So I'm reminding myself that I put a stitch marker there to remind myself. It's my modifications and notes are just to basically to remind myself that when I go to pick it up and do the next part, remind myself what I did in the last part, just so that it's a little more, a little less guesswork. And then this is my Nordic Nights. I'm using two different yarns. So I've taped two different yarns. That's, that's pretty self-explanatory. This is literally the exact same thing as this. This is my template, right? So I've just done the same thing. Um, wrote down the yarns, wrote, uh, wrote down the needles. Um, I wrote down the gauge that I got pre-blocking. Um, so this is one stitch more than blocking, which means once it's blocked, it should hit 11 stitches over two inches, which is what the pattern calls for. I'm knitting three inches of positive ease. So if it goes a little larger, it's not the end of the world. And if it goes a little smaller, it would just fit with um, 
with no ease, which is also fine with me. I'm pretty easy going when it comes to the fit of my sweaters, so long as the length of the sleeves and the body are fine. The actual fit itself is not the end of the world for me. I will wear a fitted sweater. I will wear a, a positive ease sweater. So that's that there. Um, and then this is the only sock that I've written in so far. You'll notice the template is different because when it comes to socks, I'm not gauge swatching. The size that I'm knitting is just the stitch count. And like, it's a little less important to me, this information, right? So I cast on, I wrote that in there. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm using a new heel type. Um, and so I wanted to write it down. I'm also using three different colors of varying leftover weights. And so I needed a place to record the weight so that I knew what I could use for each sock um, and not run out of yarn. So I decided to start a page specifically to write down the the weight of the yarn that I have left over. And then um, Toe Up Magic Loop Integrated Heel by Albiona. This is just literally just for my uh, memory. And then I'm going to write anything about the heel or the construction or anything in here. I have nothing to put for yarn labels here because I don't have the yarn labels anymore. So I was thinking about taping the yarn itself in the, in the journal, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, if I have any little bits left over, I'll probably do that. Um, and then the rest of the journal is literally empty. <laughs> this is it, right? So basically the goal is to sort of like put pen to paper and create Ravelry project pages in real life and sort of just like a year in review and my goals and sort of just like something where if I'm having a moment where I'm like overthinking my knitting, I can open this journal and get grounded and remind myself like what my goals are, what I've been working on, you know, um, yarn that I really liked if I want to buy it again next year, that sort of thing. So that's that. And that's this journal here. So without further ado, ooh, I knocked you. I'm so sorry. Without further ado, I think I'm going to go back to front facing and we're going to chit chat about the stash that I want to use for my make nine. So let's go do that. Okie dokie. So let's chit chat about the um, patterns that I intend to use and the yarn I intend to use it with. So you guys saw a brief sneak peek of my list of my make nines. If you watched my podcast episode, um, you will also know that I've cast on my first two projects. The first one is The Weekender by Andrea Mowry, and I am using Garnet Heather Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight from Knit Picks. Um, it looks like this. It comes in 50 gram balls, and it's inexpensive. For a worsted weight sweater, you need more balls of yarn because the yardage is lower so I tend to go for wool of the Andes almost always in the past anyway we'll see for the future but that's number one number two is the Nordic Knights sweater by Jennifer Steingast I am using Hawthorne kettle dyed fingering weight in Klamath Falls this is also knit picks and I'm using um camp fiber yarns ice flow on her fingering tweed base so that's that one next is the iris raglan for the iris raglan i am using chelsea lux hand dyed yarn this is the pecan latte colorway and the um base is the lux cobblestone base so this is the like pebble fingering weight um, pebble is not the right word for it. I forget the actual name for this like type of yarn, but it's the, it has the little, the little blips, um, the nylon running through it creates it, makes it wavy. And then there's little blips of the yarn. So that's that I'm going to likely, because when I bought this, I thought it was going to be more muted. Um, it's very orange and I'm not an orange person. So I actually purchased a Pearl Soho, like berry maroon colored uh, mohair to hold with it. It might mess with my gauge for the sweater because it's meant to be hold, held single with this, but mohair is lace weight. So I think I'll be okay. And worst case, I, if I get a slightly larger gauge, I'll just go down a size um, and knit it that way. And yeah, that's going to be my Iris Raglan. Then my bright side sweater, I bought this at the same time I bought the Chelsea Lux Fingering in 2020 from the Knitting Loft. They had a Boxing Day sale. Um, so this is Phenol PT2 Rauma. Um, it is their, I would say, 
Yeah, fingering weight. It's their fingering weight yarn. This is in the color, it's a color number, 626. I don't think they have a color name. Yeah, it's just wool, 100% fingering weight wool. The pattern is a free one from Espastrico. It's just a plain fingering weight raglan. I just, it's a staple sweater. I wanted it in a staple color. It would go really well with this shawl. I also have a lot of like blush pinks and stuff. So that's why this, it's basically just, I need a staple sweater in my wardrobe. Um, the next one is the Love Note. I don't have the yarn yet. That was my um, Boxing Day purchase this year. I got it from Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, I'm holding her Chris Gray fingering and mohair together for a Love Note. So that's gonna also be a pretty classic like gray blue sweater that I'm really excited to make. Um, if I can, I'll put some pictures up so you can see both the sweater and the yarn that I intend to use. It's just not here yet. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna make a rocket tee, which is a pattern by Tannis Fiber Arts. We like Tannis around these parts. This is Red Door Fiber Studio, One Hell of a High Lord. Um, so it's got some like purples, blues, grays, a little bit of black speckle in there. This was from her A Court of Thorns and Roses update. And I'm going to do the mohair stripes in just black lace weight mohair from Knit Picks. Um, I'm gonna see if I like the black, if it's too stark. I have a blue that's a pretty dead ringer for the blue and I might do the blue instead. I haven't decided yet. That'll be a snap decision when I um, make the garment. And if I am knitting and I knit the black and I'm like, that's gross, I'll switch it out and it'll be fine. It, I have both in my stash. So either way, it'll for sure be one hell of a high lord and then the contrast color, we shall see. Um, okay, that was number six. Number seven is the SS&A. Um, and it is a A-line oversized sweater with like the oversized it makes it, it's like a triangle that goes down the body and like I think it's seed stitch and the sleeves are fairly fitted. It's a beautiful garment. Um, so that's gonna be in Court of Dreams by Explorer Knits and Fibers. This is the Denali sock base. Um, and this is the Court of Dreams colorway, also an A Court of Thorns and Roses collaboration with Kate and Teeny Button. Um, so yeah, so it, I have two Akatar <laughs> yarns that I need to use up this year. Need to use up, really want to use up is actually the better language to use there. Um, so that is number seven. Number eight is the Very V-neck Raglan by Jesse May. Um, this might end up actually being a fingering weight cozy classic raglan because this is fingering weight and I thought the very v-neck raglan was too but it's actually meant to be fingering with mohair but the designer has knit it out of a fingering weight silk and it's like super drapey and beautiful I basically want so this is this yarn is dyed after Essek from Critical Role and Essek is like this super like intriguing dark elf evil but not like lovable character and he, he's sexy he's hot boy essek and so i really want to like do the yarn justice and do like a really hot garment so the v-neck i was like yeah because you can wear it reversible so that is on my make nine i originally actually got the black mohair to hold with this and do a sweater with it but then I was like oh it's gonna dull like the very fun variegation so maybe I don't want to do that so I think what I will likely do is swatch with a large needle just fingering weight and then I'll swatch with mohair held together and I will make that decision I might have to buy some extra mohair to hold with it it's not the end of the world it's still mostly stash um so that would be my very v-neck raglan and then last but certainly not least, another Jessie May. I love Jessie May's patterns and I've had this one in my in my pattern library for a while. Um, I'm going to knit out of Stroll Eucalyptus Tonal. This is 462 yards. I probably only needed two skeins of this, but I have three. That's okay, I can make socks too. So this is, yeah, Eucalyptus um, Tonal. I can make socks. It has nylon in it. So yeah, if I have too much yarn, but this is going to be a, what's the name of the pattern? Oh my God. I just said it, didn't I? A ripple crop top. <laughs> this is a ripple crop top by Jessie May. I'm going to make it um, fairly oversized and yeah, like loose fitting. I've seen a few people make it with like a good amount of positive ease and it just looks so comfortable and like this is extremely soft yarn so I'm very excited to make this I think I have it written in for like 
maybe June. It, this is my June knit. I might knit it even sooner. I might flip it around so that I can wear this for my birthday because my birthday's in June. We'll see. But I just, I love Jessie Mae's patterns. I knit another one of her patterns this summer, the outline tee, and I, I love it. So yeah, so we'll see. But that is my make nine. I now have to go like rearrange my yarn wall because I totally just made a mess of it. But that's my make nine. Um, you'll notice that obviously there's a couple other sweaters in my plans for the year that are not on my make nine, but I do have stash for, because I have a lot of stash. Um, oh my, I won't look it up. Whatever. It is what it is. I promised you a make nine with stash. This is what you get. Um, but yeah, so if you have a make nine that you have planned, um, please do let me know. I'm so curious. Uh, I love making a make nine. I will probably continue to do so. I really extra enjoyed it this year because I have all the stash for it. So it didn't like scratch that like you need to buy yarn itch at all it was just very like therapeutic of like okay this is the stash you have this is the stuff you want to make with it very nice very planned out um calmed me in a good way so yeah so that's what I plan on doing for the year of 2022 and we're already sort of on my way um with two of them which is really exciting so please share with me how you plan your knitting if you plan at all what it looks like for you if any of the things that I am doing are going to be translated into your planning I'd love to know I'd also love to know what works for you maybe it'll work for me too we can share our tips and tricks and yeah thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys in the next podcast episode and I hope you have a great rest of your morning day evening wherever you are uh, and yeah thank you so much take care